Good afternoon and welcome to Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. We thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture for today is Psalms, the 24th division. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands, and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Saleh. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. We appreciate you so today, as we do every day, and we would love to stay connected with you, our listening as well as our reading audience. We are currently in the process of transferring and uh, converting all of the entities of WTI Productions un under one umbrella and what that means is at one time we had several sites websites we are now combining everything under one website with the links to our bookstore our magazine our publishing division, our mentoring program, and our live podcast. So we are in a, a, a huge transition and we are looking to have everything completed by the end of this 2017. And I would like to mention on tomorrow, we will have a guest speaker a new author her name is Chanel in to introduce her new book a good thing and she will join us during the three o'clock hour of our live podcast so I invite you to tune in for details on this new book as well as details on a book signing that she has scheduled for Sunday if you would like to connect with us via our social media outlets via Facebook you can find our page WTI Productions author Angel Ferguson as well as Hope and Truth magazine we are located at 7402 North 56th Street Suite 800 A and B Tampa Florida 33617 our telephone number is 813-336-2181. And if you would like to listen to our live podcast after we leave the air, you can check us out on iHeartRadio, The Balance of Life, our YouTube channel, iTunes, as well as Google. Over the past few days, it has just been pressed upon my spirit about the souls that we encounter throughout the day and my spirit has been grieved and my prayer is that God will send a revival in your souls today that you would be recounseled back to him 
that you will come back to a place, and this is for all of us, that we would come back to a place where we were hungry and thirsty after, after Him, after the knowledge of Him, after our relationship with Him. Somewhere along the lines, we allowed life to get in the way of the times that we, we sought Him and we depended on the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Somewhere along the way, we, we decided we didn't have time to pray. We didn't have time to sit and wait for an answer. Somewhere along the way, we got too busy and too preoccupied that we didn't even greet the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. We, we got too preoccupied that we didn't spend time in the Word of God. And I pray, I pray sincerely that God will send a revival in your spirit. that will wake up those passions for him that you once had. That your spirit will be quickened for prayer. And that your soul may be quieted and made to sit still for an answer. Somewhere along the lines we forgot what we were delivered from and how our lives were spared and, and changed because we got caught up in the chaos of life. We stopped praying over our children through the night. We stopped getting up to walk through the house to make sure that everything was not only secured naturally, but spiritually. We've gotten to a place that we don't even <clears throat> have prayer before everyone disperses for the day. And then we sit and we look back and we wonder about the relationships that we have. Why our children aren't talking to us why is there a distance in our relationships with our spouses, co-workers? It is because we have let our relationship with God the Father go lapse. If you ever if you've ever had problems in relationships or communicating with anyone. The best way to learn how to have a good relationship is when you develop one with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because it's a give and take. It's no longer an I. It's a build of communication where you have your prayers and your supplications, but yet there is a dialogue of waiting on an answer, of being corrected when we are wrong, and recognized when we are following in the obedience of Him. And I don't know about you, but today I I had a chance to get out of the office and as I got out for about two hours I began to look around and pray for souls when are we going to come from behind our 
our busy selves to pray for someone else and I'm not talking about someone that you know but those souls that you pass every day these things have have really been in my spirit and therefore my prayer for you and I am included is that God will send a revival in our spirits that will awaken us out of our spiritual sleep that we may be about the assignments that he's given each and every one of us we've gotten so caught up with just our mentality of, of I and my circle that the souls that are roaming this earth that don't have a circle they're not being lifted up in prayer their, their souls are just there and we're walking by souls without a thought the more I draw closer to Christ the more I have an understanding that the best gift I can give anybody is to pray for them whether you are in need or not the physical needs but you just never know what a person is going through so the prayers of when I say God supply their need it's, 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 it's the spiritual needs as well it's not the things that are material, but the, the spiritual things, the need to be delivered in. I may not know you personally, but I can tell you this, we all need deliverance of something. And I don't need to know what your something is to keep you in prayer. I don't need to know your battle to ask God to shield and protect you and be a wall of defense all around you I, I don't need to know your hurt all I know is that I will ask the Father to get into the places of you that no man can reach because we've all experienced some type of hurt in our lives and we've pushed those things to the back of our minds and to the shelves of our memory banks. And my prayer is that God will mend and remove those things so that you can be whole in Him. Yes, my prayer and my thoughts are towards each and every one of you today. That you will be quickened and awakened, and moved out of yourself. That the core of you will remember how you just could not wait to read your word or, or how you just could not wait to share about the goodness of the Lord when is the last time you were a witness unto God and, and it's more than about the words that come out of your mouth but through your actions
and my spirit has just been in this crying and this weeping that no matter where I go and where I am spiritually I see these souls that are in need even under sound of my voice that I cry out for you as well that your relationship with, with, with the Father will be renewed today don't put it off any longer he hasn't changed he hasn't gone away but it is we who have become so preoccupied and caught up in life and we stepped back because things didn't happen the way we thought they should or, or we're just not understanding if you are a God of peace how could this or that happen to me and we've all been in that position but I have to tell you that everything happens in our lives so that he can get the glory from it. What you've gone through and you've survived is for a living testimony so that in some way the strength that you had that was given unto you through the help of the Holy Spirit is to, to help someone else. To let them know I can identify with your hurt. To allow them to understand that, that I've been there and I know and I've experienced that same pain. what you've gone through could very well be a reality check for someone else heading in the same direction but because we've gotten so caught up we stop being witnesses for Christ we stop being transparent when we are led to be transparent where we put on this pretty face in this pretty picture of our lives like we've never experienced anything and that we have been holy and 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 perfect and but we're so broken in the inside we're broken because we don't want to share when you cry out to God and when he puts you with someone to share the things that you've gone through that is a part of your healing process you are letting go you're giving it over to God you are releasing it pray that you are rejuvenated today go to the father he's still waiting on you his peace hasn't gone away his love is still there And he's saying to you today, my dear child, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you even until the end of time. The truth of the matter is he never let you go. He never stopped talking to you. It's just that we stopped listening.
that cool breeze that you feel when the sun is beaming and it just seems to pass by you over so gently that is his spirit still allowing the angels to encamp around you Oh, I pray that the spiritual clogs will be removed from your ears and the door that you have put in the, around your heart and the box that you have placed your heart in, your emotions. I, I pray that it is broken today. That those plugs are removed from your spiritual ears. That you may gain an understanding that you will accept and receive the true love of Jesus Christ one thing about this love it's it's unconditional he doesn't love us because we've done something he didn't love us we would not be here today he wouldn't have created us it's not that human kind of love where the only way I can love you is if it benefits me but God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son and then Jesus loved us so much that he was submissive unto the father and he came upon this earth in the form of a baby of a human being knowing that the end result was to give up his life for you and I that's love He knew that one day that he was going to give up his life. That was his purpose for coming here. He shed his blood for us. And when he went back to the Father, before he went back, he made provisions for us. He sent us the comforter, the Holy Spirit. You see, that love did not stop, but it continued and it grew. Don't you allow him to just be who he is in your life I know that our lives get, get busy and we have children and they're growing up and and spouses and careers but if you take a look at your 24 hours per day there is some time that you can carve out for the father it's not your alarm clock that's waking you up your body begins to to move about you are awake it is the perfect time to tell the Trinity good morning before your feet hit the floor
doesn't take a, a long dry, drawn out prayer to say good morning father good morning son and good whole good morning holy spirit takes just but a second to give him thanks for allowing you to see another day asking that he keep you giving him praise for watching over your household through the night if we would only realize that he keeps us when we know not because the enemy is continually going to and forth upon this earth seeking whom he can devour and as we lay upon our beds of comfort not giving God a idle thought we are leaving ourselves open for the intrusion of the enemy. But all it takes for your protection of the Father through the Holy Spirit is your recounseling back to Him with your heart. And the reason why we are allowed to wake up every day is because every single day God is giving us another opportunity to be recounseled back to him. Stop looking at it as just another day, but it is another opportunity to allow him to be Lord of your life, to build the relationship that you have with him, to find out your purpose in this life and what part do you have in his vision for this world. That is why we were allowed to see another day. Oh, at the end of the day, when the house is quiet and everyone has gone off to bed and, and when you breathe and say, oh, it's been a long day, but you should take another breath and say, I thank you for giving me the strength to get through this day that we all left and we went our separate ways we were able to come back together where is our relationship Truly, my heart cries out for you today. If you don't have a relationship with him, he's waiting. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to be your God. He wants to shield you and protect you. I don't know about you, but I, I need him. I need the guidance that he can provide. I've tried to do things my way so many times. And in so many areas of my life. And they failed. But I know that if I go to the one who created me. He knows all about me and he knows what's ahead. So if I can learn to submit myself and follow his directions the way he would give it to me, I know that all things will work together for my good because I love him. He already knows the end results. So I know that he's not going to lead me in error. And after you've gone through doing it your way and messing it up time and time again, and aren't you tired? Don't you want to have a good end result?
when I say and I quote the scripture this is the day that the Lord has made it is truly a testimony he has made this day and I'm grateful for this day I am appreciating the fact that he allowed me to be a part of this day because he didn't have to but he gives me another opportunity I can't correct the things that I did wrong yesterday or the day before but what I can do is I can repent and move forward with a mindset of not making that same mistake again we have to get to a point in our lives that we are uncomfortable with sinning we are uncomfortable sitting around and, and condoning and approving sin somewhere because we, we backed off on our our faithfulness and obedience to God that we have condoned and we have accepted so many things and I don't know if you understand this but that that kind of hinders and blocks our relationship with God the Father because we're supposed to be called out, separated, peculiar people, not of this world. Truly my prayer for you today is, is a revival in your spirit. That you will remember the times where you, 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 you soaked up the Word of God and you, you could not get enough of reading it. That you had a, a, a prayer and a worship within you. to wait for someone to come to town for the pastor to say we need a revival you can have your revival at any time that is my prayer for you today that your spirit be quickened that you are recounseled back to the Father that the joy of the Lord will return unto you that you become spiritually washed. Yes, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. That hyssop, that he washes you, that he removes the residue of stagnation from you. That you draw closer to him because He's still there. I pray that you stop pushing him away. I pray that you stop running. And that you will allow him to be God of your life. Allow him to love you. We keep looking for love in all the wrong places. We keep looking for love in people and material things. But here is a God that will not change on you. He will not trade you in for someone else. He will not use or abuse you. He will not prostitute you. He will not lie to you. He will not deceive you. You don't have to do anything grand. You don't have to sell your body. You don't have to lie for him. 
for he loves you for you. thing about his love is you didn't have to fix yourself up for him to love you. You didn't have to dye your hair or put on something that you could not afford or pretend to be someone that you're not. Because he saw the heart of you. And he loved you from there. He didn't love you for your appearance. He didn't even love you because it was your best day. But he loved you because you were you. Because he saw the heart of you simply because he wanted the very best for you because he saw down the line he knew the potential he put in you he already knew what you were capable of and what you weren't capable of he knew the days that you would fade to the background and when you would push forward in him he knew all of these things about you yet he loved you He knew the precise moment when you were going to stop reading your word. He knew exactly when you were going to stop praying. But that didn't change his love towards you. He yet loved you. He yet said, that's my child. And even though he knew all of those things, he also knew when you would return. I just came by to pray for a revival in your spirit. A fresh anointing to fall on you that you become refreshed and renewed. Everywhere you turn, I pray that you feel his presence. I pray that his thoughts, that the thoughts of meditation and praise and worship will fall in your spirit. That whatever you are doing, whether it's cooking for the family, your personal time that the thought of praise and the whisper of worship and thanksgiving will permeate you don't hide back the the tears because those tears are coming to wash be cleansed today we need a cleansing get into your space into your homes and cry out before God As you go about your day, and as you travel to and for from work or wherever you may do throughout your day, say a prayer for those that you pass by, those spiritual souls that are there. Remember. We're spiritual beings. 
And just as God, the Father, spoke it and it was so. He said, I sent my word to heal your disease. And as you all recounsel back to him, and you turn to him with your whole heart, you can speak the word of healing and restoration out into the atmosphere. And it shall be. Believe and it shall be. You're doing it in the name of the Father only thing you are doing is being an intercessor in prayer. It's the same way when we pray over our children and they're not necessarily always in our midst but we are lifting them up in prayer. Learn to have that same concept of prayer for the souls upon this earth. I pray for divine healing and deliverance and restoration unto the Father. That is what we need today. We don't need to be face to face for me to keep you in prayer. I don't need to know your name. But I know you have a soul. I know that I want you to be whole in him. I want you to have a rich relationship and worship with him. I want you to be able to pursue your hopes and dreams that you will know the will of your life through him that is my desire for you today that is my prayer for you today Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for each and every soul under the sound of my voice that today you would send a revival in their spirit, that you would put a quickening in their hearts, that they will reconcile themselves back to you, that they will come back to you, Lord God. For a relationship with you that you will reunite and, and stir up that flame in them that you will quicken their thirst and their hunger intensify it intensify that hunger for the word of God intensify that thirst that they may drink and eat of your word that you may be that living well in them. Never to let it go dry. Lord, never allow them to be full. But every time that they share in the word, that they will get hungry all the more. Continually hungry and thirsty after the knowledge of you. We speak healing and restoration in all the places in their lives that only you can reach, that only you know about. We speak life unto everyone under the sound of my voice. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day.